हेलो एवरीवन सो दिस इज सी ए कौशिक मुखेश सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर फॉर द एग्जामिनेशंस विथ रिगार्ड टू सी ए फाउंडेशन फॉर द बिजनेस लॉस पेपर एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज द सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट इन द सेल ऑफ गुड्स एक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द लास्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर फॉर द एग्जाम कंपलसरी Five marks question will come from this chapter called as unpaid seller. Consistently, students are asking since a long number of days regarding a video on unpaid seller. So I want to put an exhaustive coverage of the entire chapter unpaid seller in such a way that everyone who ever listened to the full lecture will have a full clarity with regard to this particular area called as. unpaid seller no doubts in this regard once after the completion of the lecture every point each and everything inside this area i will be covering out in this particular lecture unpaid seller concept will be the fourth unit of your soga i mean the sale of goods act so in this we are talking about entirely the default with regard to the buyer there will be two parties in a sale contract one is a seller another one is a buyer if buyer commits a default what will be the consequence is the entire discussion in this particular area if buyer commits a default if buyer commits a default what great will happen if buyer commits a default in buying the particular goods automatically it will result in a breach of contract already we read a breach of contract chapter in contract act whenever there is a breach you have options like three types of options are there one you can rescind the contract second one you can sue him for the breach and third one you can recover damages okay and you can also ask him for a specific performance etc etc so many things are there with regard to the sale of goods act if buyer commits a breach okay let me show you this uh, point on the screen just a minute yes see this if buyer commits a default what are the rights of a seller first point number 1 is unpaid seller means who didn't pay buyer didn't pay such a seller to whom a buyer committed a default we call him as a unpaid seller he is called as a defaulted buyer he is called as what buyer defaulted buyer sir okay now two questions will arise whenever i call sale of goods there are two parties okay first write down somewhere in the notes itself concept covered concept covered by what by this chapter there will be two parties i mean first one is a seller and a buyer seller agree to sell buyer <clears throat> will agree to buy by making a payment okay by making a payment listen carefully to the words buyer is ready to buy okay then okay buyer has failed to buy if buyer has failed to buy automatically what will happen if the buyer failed to buy if a buyer has failed to buy the particular goods belonging to you this will be governed by breach of contract under contract act 
if payment failure has been made sale of goods act will get attracted that's why he didn't use okay defaulted buyer concept unpaid seller this particular chapter will be talking completely about default in making the payment default in making what's a payment if a person commits a default in making a payment okay if a person commits a default in making a payment then that person will be called as a unpaid seller called as what's a unpaid seller that means you didn't pay for that this payment part alone is governed by a chapter called as or governed by an act called as sale of goods act by a chapter unpaid seller okay this is the area that is being covered so see the screen once so concept covered is seller committed a default is a breach of contract which is not governed by this particular act okay buyer if he committed a default what will happen so he didn't buy it will result in a breach of contract he he is ready to buy but he could not make a payment then the failure to make a payment will be governed by sale of goods act under sale of goods act if a buyer fails to make a payment what are all the rights of that seller is what we are going to discuss in this entire chapter okay now whenever there is a failure two sec uh, two parts will come again first part what will happen to the goods what will happen to the buyer who has a defaulted that means he said he will buy but he didn't buy what can i do with the goods what he promised to buy what will happen to the defaulted buyer is the two points which we are going to cover throughout this particular chapter that's what he conveyed here against the goods what are my rights against the buyer what are my rights okay against the buyer for not buying see here against the buyer for not buying is governed by contract act directly same will be replicated again in this chapter that's why suit for the price suit for damages suit for interest etc all these things are similar to contract act but these are absolutely exclusive points which we have to read in this particular chapter rights of an unpaid seller rights of what seller sir unpaid seller hope everyone is thorough with this particular area first right ah so let us start with the concept discussion now okay first let us see a contract comprises of reciprocal promise what is the promise i made sell what is the promise you said buy and pay in a contract of sale if seller is under obligation to deliver goods buyer has to pay for it in case buyer fails or refuses to pay 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 always i am using the word pay payment is the point in this chapter okay the seller as an unpaid seller shall have certain rights what are the rights let us see the points clearly according to section 45 sub section number 1 of sale of goods act 1930 the seller of the goods is deemed to be an unpaid seller the seller shall be deemed to be what sir unpaid seller in the following cases let us see what are all the cases under which we can treat him as such so let's continue see here according to section 45 sub section 1 of soga the seller of the goods is deemed as an unpaid seller if if a or b is in existence what is a whole of the price has not been paid or tendered condition 1 and seller had an immediate right of action for the price seller had an immediate right of action for the price condition number 2 these are the two important conditions either you satisfy these two or when a bill of exchange or other negotiable instrument has been received as a conditional payment and the condition on which it was received has not been fulfilled by reason of dishonor of the instrument or otherwise sir so, there is a bill 
or there is a check example check check has been issued by the buyer to the seller seller went to the bank and sent for presentment check will be presented for payment or not it will be sent for clearing bank he sent it for clearing and the check has been dishonored that means you said that i will pay through a check check is a condition here i will pay but payment only through a bill of exchange or a negotiable instrument not in cash that's a conditional payment okay and the condition on which it was it has not been fulfilled by the reason of dishonor of the instrument or otherwise due to any reason it may be dishonor or you may lose the check something has happened okay due to some reason check is not presented for payment in such case that person the seller is called as a unpaid seller okay the default should be from the buyer side not from the seller side i issued check seller lost the check means that will not become unpaid seller i have issued you the check na so when a bill of exchange has been received as a conditional payment okay as a condition i received uh, the particular uh, bill of exchange and the condition on which it has been received was not has not been fulfilled by reason of dishonor of the instrument or otherwise that mean due to dishonor of the instrument or lacking of the fund or due to insolvency of the party or death of the issuer of the check due to so many reasons under negotiable instruments act a check may be dishonored so the condition here which is important is the dishonor that means you you promise that you will buy the goods payment will be made payment will be made in the form of a negotiable instrument on that condition you purchase the goods that means you bought the goods on a condition that you are going to make a payment through a negotiable instrument you issued a negotiable instrument i represent uh, you represents buyer buyer issued a negotiable instrument that negotiable instrument which has been issued has been dishonored why because of lack of money or because of death of the party issuing it due to so many reasons said under negotiable instruments act that particular check has been dishonored bill has been dishonored okay so bill has been dishonored so in such case buyer will be called as a unpaid buyer sorry buyer will be called as a defaulted buyer seller will be called as a unpaid seller next the whole of the price has not been paid or tendered so first let us focus on understanding the whole of the price whole of the price means for example seller buyer ye promised to sell the goods b ye at the rate of 1000 per bag okay at the rate of 1000 per bag now b has to make a payment or not he made a payment of rupees 600 per bag there is a deficit 400 per bag i will be called as a unpaid seller you will be called as a defaulted buyer sir i paid 600 but whole of the price whole of the price has not been paid so that means whole if you don't pay you will be called as a defaulted buyer i will be called as a unpaid seller am i clear everyone so the whole of the price has not been paid even one our rupee balance is there to that extent you will become a un defaulted buyer i will become a unpaid seller okay next and seller had an immediate right of action for the price seller had an immediate right of action for the price okay so now 
we completed the first part of this particular discussion either whole of the amount is not received and a bill of exchange or negotiable instrument has been received as a conditional payment and that has been paid or dishonored or dishonored due to some reason it has been dishonored okay next the term seller here includes includes any person who is in the position of a seller as for instance an agent of the seller to whom bill of lading has been endorsed or a consignor or agent who has himself paid is or directly responsible for the price section 45 subsection number 2 market very important because you are not understanding that statement made that only will come in examination what irritates us is more important for the exams clear i am making it full screen see the point read it first i am asking you to read the term seller includes read that point carefully i am giving you 2 minutes time take enough time no problem but read it for 2 3 times see here <clears throat> hope you completed reading okay now let us see this the term seller here includes any person who is in the position of a seller as for instance an agent of seller to whom a bill of lading has been endorsed bill of lading will be issued during transportation we will give containing the details of the shipment okay so the term seller here includes any person who is in the position of a seller as for instance means for example an agent of the seller to whom a bill of lading has been endorsed okay or a consignor or agent who has himself paid or is directly responsible for the price like that he has given sir what is the meaning i have a diagram for that first i will give i will give explanation later you can uh, copy it listen there is a buyer sir there is a seller there is a buyer a promise to sell b promise to buy and pay okay now listen carefully a is in hyderabad B is from Chennai. How can I send? In aid, I will throw goods. Ah, some truck or something is required to shipment of the goods or not. So I appointed a goods carrier vehicle. Okay, who will carry the vehicles from one place to another place? I hired him in Hyderabad for around the twelve twelve hours journey. Is there from Hyderabad Chennai to Hyderabad or Hyderabad to Chennai? 
ഐ ഹാവ് ഹൈർഡ് എ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ടേഷൻ പെർസൺ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ടർ ടു ഹിം ഐ ഹാവ് ഗിവൻ ബിൽ ഓഫ് ലേഡിംഗ് ബിൽ ഓഫ് ലേഡിംഗ് മീൻസ് വാട്ട് ബിൽ ഓഫ് ലേഡിംഗ് മീൻസ് എ പേഴ്സൺ ഇൻ ഹൈദരാബാദ് മിസ്റ്റർ എ ഈസ് ഇഷ്യൂയിങ് ഗുഡ്സ് ടു ഹൂം ടു മിസ്റ്റർ എക്സ് എ ഏജൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് മിസ്റ്റർ എ ഇൻ ചെന്നൈ എ എക്സ് വിൽ ബി ഇൻ ചെന്നൈ ഹി ഈസ് എ ഏജൻറ്റ് എ ജി മീൻസ് ഏജൻറ്റ് A is the principal, X is the agent. Agent resides in Chennai. So, I said that agent, I am sending the goods to you through a vehicle by giving him a bill of lading. If you don't have bill of lading, highway authorities can stop your vehicle. They will seize the vehicle. If you don't tell what is the description of the goods to whom you are sending in Chennai. So, therefore, generally what people will do is a person in hyderabad will give bill of lading to the transporter in the bill of lading i will write the name of x x will receive the goods on behalf of a and he will sell on behalf of a to mr b in chennai this is how they will do if b commits a default in making the payment x will have all the rights what a would have that's what he want to tell okay that's why it has the same rights like a in case of default sir what rights will be there that's what the entire story we are going to discuss now okay we will we will discuss that point soon but i will give you one right lien will be there what 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 power what right lien lien means take the possession of the goods okay that power will be there that power what a can do x also can do as a agent okay so therefore in this chapter when i use the word seller seller not only mean the main seller seller also includes uh, agents and other persons working under the seller okay please copy down this example if you want let me make it a document uh, no copy copy down completed copying down so let's go to the next part <clears throat> rights of unpaid seller what are the rights of an unpaid seller we are going to understand the rights available to him okay three types of rights were given subject to the provisions of this act and any other law for the time being in force notwithstanding that the property in the goods have been passed to the buyer notwithstanding means ignoring that the property in the goods property ownership in the goods may have passed to the buyer ownership may be passed to the buyer the unpaid seller of the goods as such has by implication of law okay that means law has given him inherent right means separately in the court he need not file any case law directly has given him some rights what are those let us see okay first let me explain the point sir what do you mean by notwithstanding or ignoring the uh, title or ownership of the goods what does it mean listen in case of in case of any transaction of sale happen any transaction of sale that has happened seller will sell the goods 
buyer will take the possession of the goods two things will happen buyer has received the goods already when the buyer has received the goods already that means what do you mean by that already if you have delivered the goods i don't have a right of retainment i don't have a right of lien okay meanings i will tell you later okay so possession is transferred na you need not do you can't do anything with the goods what we can do in case a delivery is made we will discuss separately i want to convey first point is we have given him the title or ownership we have transferred to him goods are not at delivered why it will happen in case of a credit transaction in case of which transaction credit transaction in case of a credit transaction what generally happens we will first give a invoice to him directly sir take this invoice goods we will send to you okay goods we will send to you you can make the payment in another 2 3 days sir we will tell like that he has to make the payment okay first we will write invoice and we give you the invoice to him we gave invoice in his name but that person has failed to make the payment goods are still with us in such case what will happen we have to see i repeat not withstanding the property in the goods have been passed to the buyer the unpaid seller of the goods as such by implication of law has three rights let us first read he has a right of a lien what right he has he has a right of lien right number 1 if the buyer is insolvent who is insolvent buyer is insolvent a right of stopping the goods in transit that means if the goods are going on during the transit period means whenever you are a buyer and i am a seller and you are in a long distance when we have to deliver the goods i will deliver through the transit goods will go by a lorry or a truck it takes around a week time to reach i am in chennai you are in delhi both are in both the corners of india it will take at least a week time to deliver week to 10 days those are called as a goods in transit whenever goods in transit is there what will happen we will first give the bill of lading and the title of that invoice in the name of another party you are a buyer i am a seller i am selling the goods to you i will first write a invoice in your name means what so and so person has bought the goods i will write a invoice okay invoice if i write what does it mean i am transferring the ownership of the goods to you in the document your name has already been written but possession is not a transfer to you it is going on in the transit it is there at that time in that 10 days gap i came to know that the buyer became insolvent in that case i have a right to, to stop the goods which are in transit okay after he has parted with the possession of them okay parted with the possession of them that means still the possession is in the transit okay in the transit it is there it is totally received by other party yeah? no it is totally with me yeah? no part is there so i have only a part of possession because i have a right to stop the transit so immediately what i will do if i know about the insolvency of the buyer buyer cannot pay therefore what i will do stop the goods i have that right who has unpaid seller why seller is unpaid because buyer became insolvent okay first case i have a lien when if i have the possession of those goods if i have the possession of those goods i didn't even send the goods i said that i will deliver the goods in 10 days okay example i will tell you credit transaction was made what i said you make the payment you make the payment now contract was entered today ownership deed will be written but once you make the payment i will release the goods i said 10 days completed you didn't uh, pay, make any payment i will not deliver the goods i will possess the lien what i will exercise lien i will exercise lien means take the possession of the goods and retain with the seller only don't give to the buyer next right of a resale what is this right we will discuss at the end of this particular concept called as a unpaid seller unpaid seller chapter la ending la it will come which concept uh, right of a resale how that will be we will see at the end okay next where the property in the goods has not passed to the buyer means ownership also not transfer 
the unpaid seller in addition to other remedies has right of withholding delivery what do you mean right of withholding delivery i have to deliver the goods na okay i have to deliver the goods na goods are not a delivered goods are not a delivered and moreover property in goods also not transferred that means invoice not written goods are also not transferred in that time only we came to know that buyer will has become insolvent okay buyer has become insolvent or buyer said that i cannot buy in such cases what are the rights available to the seller withhold the delivery sir my paper is withheld means what it is not given to you okay delivery a you need not make i have a right to stop the delivery sir what is lien what is withholding delivery lien means invoice has been written in the name of that other party ownership has been transferred since he failed to make a repayment na his goods i will stop and keep with me withholding delivery means property not transferred goods are also not transferred okay okay where property in the goods has not passed to the buyer the unpaid seller has in addition to his other remedies a right of withholding delivery similar to and coextensive with the right of lien coextensive means like that of okay like that of lien and stoppage in transit he also have a right to withhold the delivery next an unpaid seller has been expressly given right against the goods as well as the buyer personally which are discussed as under means unpaid seller has rights not only against the goods he also have the rights against the buyer personally he can also take action against the buyer what are those actions against the goods and against the buyer personally is what we are going to discuss in this chapter unpaid seller okay let us see so hope you can understand this point first one what is the right number one lien in case of insolvency i can stop the goods in transit okay number 3 is right of resale write down somewhere else as a shortcut point okay these are the three rights about that we are going to discuss right of unpaid seller against the goods two situations will come where property is passed property not passed property represents what title ownership okay now the unpaid seller has the following rights first one what is the power lien here we have written lien na we are now going to analyze that more clearly okay more clearly we are going to analyze according to subsection 1 subject to the provisions the unpaid seller of the goods who is in possession of them that means ownership may be transferred may not be transferred but still what is there possession is there is entitled to retain possession of them until the payment or tender for the price is a price in the following cases when i can exercise a lien lien if you have to exercise one important condition you need to satisfy number 1 you should be in the possession of the goods once goods are given to the other party you can't exercise lien you can exercise other rights against the person okay on goods you can't take any lien lien does not mean making a robbery or a theft of the goods already given if the goods are with you but the payment failure has been made instead of giving him you will retain with you that's called as a lien okay now post lien pre lien concepts pre lien means what ownership also not transferred na at that time withhold the property we call if the ownership also transferred we will call it as a lien okay now see until the payment that means till when i can put the lien i can exercise the lien till the payment has been received next in what cases i can do in what cases i can exercise lien 
number one okay where the goods have been sold without any stipulation as to the credit one person came to me he said that i want this good i said that okay i will sell it at uh, 5000 rupees okay i will sell it at 5000 rupees i have drafted invoice everything has been made i signed and i gave invoice to him sir just wait for 10 minutes delivery of the goods will be made i said he said that i can't make payment today first he will tell that stop that payment other sir stop the delivery means what i will exercise the lien i will exercise what's a lien okay or agreement entered today for a sale happening in the future okay sale happening in the future that's not credit transaction cash a delivery will be made at spot payment will be made at spot agreement entered in the past okay agreement entered in the past okay now on the due date you didn't make the payment i won't deliver the, i won't deliver the goods i will excise the lien where the goods have been sold without a stipulation as to the credit this is also called as a cash sale where the goods have been sold on credit but the term of credit has been expired term of credit has been expired credit is given but the credit term has been expired where the buyer becomes insolvent okay it was on credit credit has expired or the buyer has become insolvent according to subsection 2 the seller may exercise his right of lien notwithstanding that he is in the position of goods as an agent or as a bailey for the buyer that means seller need not be only the main seller seller can also be a agent or a bailey for the buyer bailey for the buyer sir i didn't understand what is this bailey for the buyer he may ask question on that in examination then what to do sir how can i understand this particular point seller may exercise his right of lien okay seller may exercise a right of lien ignoring that he is in possession of goods as a agent he may be agent already we read but bailey for the buyer we didn't read it what does it mean see here two parties are there buyer okay now listen a promise to sell b promise to buy okay and b also instructed a b also instructed a are okay b also instructed a see here a agreed to sell 100 rice bags b agreed to buy 100 rice bags rice bag after buying you have to keep it in a cold storage or a warehouse or not directly where you will put a is also having the seller is also having a cold storage he said that a after the sale is completed, I have to make the payment in 10 days. Na? I will make the payment. You put the goods in the warehouse, he said. Credit transaction means what we will generally do in credit transaction here. Credit transaction means what? You will pay amount in the future. Okay. Goods are not taken as a possession because it is in the possession of the seller only because he is acting as a bailey for the buyer. 
Bailey means what? There are two parties in a bailment contract. Bailar Bailey. Bailar will transfer goods to the Bailey for a purpose. And he will take back once the purpose is accomplished. A is a seller. B is a buyer. Bought the goods. And he requested A being a seller. A, you have a warehouse. Na? You keep these goods for three months in your warehouse only. Anyway, in 10 days, I will make the payment to you, he said. Promptly, A has transferred all the goods directly to the warehouse and he kept there. 10 days completed, B didn't make the payment. Now, even though I am, I am acting as a bailey to the buyer, still I have a right of lien if payment is not received properly. Same applicable also for the agent. Already I discussed the agent concept previously. Okay. This is called as Bailey to buyer. Next one. Part delivery. What is the next concept, sir? Part delivery. Let's discuss on part delivery concept. So let's move on to the next concept. See here. Part delivery is the next section. Section number 48. Where unpaid seller has made part delivery of the goods. He may exercise his right of lien on the reminder. Reminder means undelivered. Unless, when he can do the lean on undelivered part, unless such part delivery has been made under such a circumstances as to show an agreement to waive the lien. Okay, what does it mean? Let me explain. For example, seller agreed to sell the goods to the buyer. Buyer agreed to pay the amount for that particular goods. Okay, due date came, credit sale, due date came, he didn't even... He didn't even pay the goods. Say for example, A ordered, A agreed to sell the B 100 kgs of rice bag. 100 kgs of rice bag. Okay. 100 kgs of rice bag, A promised to buy from, A promised to sell to B and B promised to buy and make the payment of that particular amount of price for the 100 kgs of rice bag. Say for example, 5000 rupees. Now, the he, a, a agreement entered today. And A said to B, from tomorrow onwards, for next to one month, you can take at any time. It will be kept in the shop. Okay, it will be kept in the shop. You can take at any time. Okay, now listen carefully to the point. So, A said that you can take the goods at any time. You come to the shop and take in the next one month time. Okay, make the payment after one month. When you are taking, make the payment after one month. In this one month time, any time you can take the goods. Uh, I mean the bags. B came to A after the due date. Means he didn't make the payment. After the due date, he came to the shop. And he asked for delivery. He asked for delivery. Now this particular person being A, being a seller, said that knowingly that due date has crossed, but he didn't make the payment. He said that deliver him 20 bags of rice. Okay, he asked, I want 20 cages first. Immediately, he delivered the 20 cages. The moment you deliver the 20 cages of rice bag to Mr. B, this 100 cages of rice is divided into 20 cages of 5 bags. Okay. In this, he, he asked, I will first take one bag. He came on the due date, before due date, after due date, after due date, he came. And he said, I want one bag first. You delivered that one bag as per the promise made. The delivery of that one bag will represent your intention to waive the lien. That means you know the due date has crossed. You know that he didn't make the payment. Even then you are agreeing for the part delivery of 20 kgs means what? You are ready to exercise your lien or not ready to exercise the lien or not ready to exercise the lien. If you are not, if you are ready to exercise the lien, what you would have said him? Due date completed by yesterday. You didn't come. Therefore, our promise has come to an end. You make the payment and then take the goods I have to tell. But instead of telling all those things, you said that, okay, as he asked, give one bag of rice to him first, you said, nah. so you have no right of lien on the remaining four bags. Okay, so you have delivered, you have delivered. Now the terms and conditions, like clearly you said that you can pay in installment basis. When you pay, you can take. In that case, 
ఐ మేడ్ ట్వంటీ కేజెస్ డెలివరీ రిమైనింగ్ ఎయిటీ కేజెస్ ఐ విల్ మేక్ డెలివరీ ఓన్లీ ఇఫ్ యూ మేక్ ద పేమెంట్ సో దెర్ ఈస్ నో సచ్ ఇంటెన్షన్ బిట్వీన్ అస్ క్లియర్లీ వీ రోట్ అన్ అగ్రిమెంట్ ఓకే క్లియర్లీ వీ రోట్ అన్ అగ్రిమెంట్ యూ కెన్ టేక్ ట్వంటీ వన్ బ్యాగ్ ఫస్ట్ టు దట్ వన్ బ్యాగ్ యూ పే నౌ ఐ విల్ స్టోర్ ద బ్యాగ్స్ ఫర్ యూ హండ్రెడ్ కేజెస్ బట్ ఆన్ పేమెంట్ యూ కెన్ టేక్ అట్ ఎనీ టైమ్ ఇన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ వన్ మంత్ యూ కెన్ టేక్ దట్ పర్టికులర్ రైస్ బ్యాగ్స్ ఐ సెట్ వన్ బ్యాగ్ యూ హ్యావ్ టేకెన్ యూ పెయిడ్ అండ్ యూ హ్యావ్ టేకెన్ బ్యాలెన్స్ యూ ఆర్ నాట్ పేయింగ్ ఐ కెన్ స్టాప్ ది డెలివరీ ఆఫ్ దోస్ గుడ్స్ బై ఎక్సర్సైజ్ ఇన్ ద లీన్ ఓకే వేర్ ద పార్ట్ డెలివరీ హ్యాస్ బీన్ మేడ్ ఆన్ ద బ్యాలెన్స్ యూ కెన్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ ద లీన్ ఓకే ఆన్ ద బ్యాలెన్స్ యూ కెన్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ వాట్స్ అ లీన్ సో వెన్ క్రెడిట్ ట్రాన్సాక్షన్స్ ఆర్ మేడ్ దీస్ ఆర్ వెరీ పాపులర్ క్రెడిట్ ట్రాన్సాక్షన్ మీన్స్ వాట్ యూ విల్ సే దాట్ ఐ విల్ టేక్ ద గూడ్స్ ఓకే కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ టైంలో హౌ ద సిమెంట్ బ్యాగ్స్ విల్ బి డెలివర్డ్ హౌ ద సిమెంట్ బ్యాగ్స్ విల్ బి డెలివర్డ్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ విల్ బి ఫర్ ఫుల్ వన్ ఇయర్ సిమెంట్ బ్యాగ్స్ విల్ బి ఆర్డర్డ్ ఫస్ట్ దే విల్ మేక్ ద పేమెంట్ ఇట్ అ లేటర్ స్టేజ్ ఫస్ట్ ఆల్ ద సిమెంట్ బ్యాగ్స్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ దే విల్ ఫస్ట్ ఆర్డర్ ఆన్ ఆర్డర్ దే విల్ ఫస్ట్ సప్లై సమ్ సిమెంట్ బ్యాగ్స్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు మేక్ ఎ పేమెంట్ ఆఫ్టర్ వన్ మంత్ ఆర్ వన్ అండ్ హాఫ్ మంత్ వన్స్ యూ మేక్ ద పేమెంట్ రిమైనింగ్ దే విల్ రిలీజ్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ మేక్ ద ఫస్ట్ పేమెంట్ దే విల్ నాట్ రిలీజ్ ద నెక్స్ట్ ద ఎక్సైజ్ ద లీన్ ఈవెన్ ఆఫ్టర్ యూ ఆర్ నాట్ పేయింగ్ స్టిల్ ఇఫ్ దే ఆర్ డెలివరింగ్ సమ్ గుడ్స్ టు యూ దే ఆర్ రెడీ టు వేవ్ ద లీన్ ఇట్స్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ ఎ ఇంప్లైడ్ వేవర్ ఓకే సో what is the concept we learned now when part delivery of goods have been made where unpaid seller has made a part delivery of goods he may exercise his right of lien on the remainder part unless such part delivery has been made under circumstances as to show an agreement to waive the lien so where unpaid seller has made part delivery he may exercise the right of lien on the balance but exception is there if intention is to agree to waive the lien then this part then remaining part you can't exercise the lien next termination of lien means when lien will be terminated completed okay the unpaid seller loses his lien in following three cases where he deliver goods to the carrier means to the transporter or to the other bailey for the purpose of transmission to the buyer without reserving the right of disposal of the goods means i transfer goods directly to that party to a transporter i said that and i said that i am not having any right on these goods you do whatever you want you transfer that to the buyer now i am having a right or not having a right of disposal i am not having a right of disposal of these goods example okay i will repeat the point one second and i will like also give a example <coughs> see here. when he deliver the goods to a carrier or other bailey for the purpose of transmission to the buyer without reserving the right of disposal of the goods sir what does it mean very very important point is what is the nature of the carrier carrier means the person who carry the goods and send to the other party that person is called as a carrier okay the carrier that other party who is standing in the middle okay what is his nature simply try to understand like this seller went to the transportation person he asked him i am putting you the goods inside the vehicle you take this directly to delhi deliver the goods once he make the payment for the goods to you okay once he make the payment for the goods to you or sign on the promissory note that he will pay in future or sign on the bill then only deliver the goods to him now i am putting a i am reserving a right whether to dispose the goods to you or not through my carrier that means my carrier person will come to you he will issue a bill to you if it is a credit transaction you sign on that bill once you sign on the bill he will take back the bill and i will have a seller have a right to recover from you on the due date once he sign on the bill then only deliver the goods i said very clearly to the carrier person now the carrier person reach it delhi three situations will happen or two situations will happen that person has a signed on the bill now the condition on which i said you have to dispose the goods have been satisfied give the goods to him give the goods to him give the goods to whom give the goods to that particular party now you can't exercise lien because goods are delivered to him number 1 over number 2 i said please sign on the bill he said that no i will not sign on the bill please deliver the goods you cannot deliver 
because carrier has to accept or career of the that particular carrier person should honor the instructions given by his principal being a seller okay he said that no sir i will not give you the goods until and unless okay until and unless you sign on this bill because we are having a right to reserve the uh, uh, disposal of the goods i will not dispose these goods from the vehicle to you unless and until you make the payment okay now listen carefully to the point i didn't put any condition directly carrier went there and he delivered the goods so that can be another situation that can happen three situations technically situation 1 i asked him to sign on the bill and make the payment okay he signed on the bill or he made the payment if it is a cash payment immediate cash or if it is a credit transaction sign on the promissory note or on the bill he does both i delivered him you can't exercise lien termination of lien number 2 i said that you deliver the goods to him now i didn't impose any condition now listen carefully the carrier person will become the agent of the buyer when carrier becomes agent of the seller if seller gives instructions to the carrier person only when he satisfy this condition then only give the goods to him in such case carrier will become the agent of the seller without any instructions and conditions if you deliver the goods to the carrier the carrier will become the agent of the buyer and not the agent of seller okay deliver to the agent will become the delivery to the principal directly so if you don't put any condition on disposal then you can't exercise the lien once goods received by the carrier okay once goods are received by the carrier it, it represents a receipt by the buyer itself okay so simply to summarize condition for disposal is there or not there you check in the question condition is not there then delivery to the carrier will become the delivery to the buyer you can't exercise lien in all other cases you can still exercise the lien okay so that's why if without reserving any right of disposal if you deliver then termination of lien or else no termination okay va so if you deliver the goods to that particular party even part delivery or full delivery if you make once the delivery is made you can't exercise any lien on the balance or or lien on the total goods okay when the buyer or his agent lawfully obtain the possession of the goods that means they made the payment and they have made they made delay you exercise lien they made the payment you have to release the lien termination of lien or a waiver the unpaid seller of the goods having a lien there on does not lose his lien by reason only that he has obtained a decree for the price of the goods sir price is disputed you unpaid 1 lakh i said that i am only i have to pay 80000 now there is a dispute going on okay that means even during the dispute i can exercise the lien i will still have the lien the unpaid seller having lien there on does not lose his lien by reason only that he has obtained a decree for the price of the goods that means even if there is a dispute going on with regard to the price even during that time he can still exercise the lien just whatever we read now 47 48 49 this is only just a analysis with some examples they have given okay with this we have completed one part of the unpaid seller concept unpaid seller is a very big area okay this area will be covered in two parts okay two part two to three parts max max we will be completed in two parts this is the part number 1 okay part number 1 lo we have completed lien concept so the concept of goods in transit and other remaining concepts will be discussed in another one lecture and we will be completing of entire unpaid seller concept the main crux of area with regard is the lien in the exam that lien concept is completed first once lien concept is completed stoppage in transit and continuation concepts another stoppage in transit completed na 95% over buyer actions are similar to the contract act so that second part right in stoppage to the uh, right of stoppage in transit we will be discussing in a separate lecture okay such so that it will be easy for you to understand thank you